everyone um i've got my hair up in a towel because i've just got out the shower i was going to sit down set the tripod up film a film film i don't know what that, that was film a professional introduction for this video and then i realized that i actually just can't do that right now if i'm honest i know that i definitely have come a long way with how i react to grades and how i feel around grades and i definitely do feel like i was a lot healthier in my final year of uni in terms of work life balance and i didn't bleed myself dry and run myself into the ground and sacrifice basically everything else for the sake of doing well but equally i'm not gonna lie i'm getting my results some point this week and i am just terrified because as much as I know that grades don't matter and that I know that I've put my all into it but also looked after myself, you know, I worked really hard and I am still nervous about what the result's going to be and I feel like this is my last hurrah, as it were, and I feel like I just want the fruits of my efforts to appear basically um so this is why i'm just filming a casual intro to this video because i have been fine um but the last like day or so it has started to kind of i think i was more subconsciously worried about it than i thought and i do think that having a channel where i have like posted my results every single year you know since i was 16 and you know i'm really proud of the results that i've got um even if i'm not so happy with you know how ill i made myself sometimes and i would never want anyone to you know emulate that which is why i've been really open and honest about like how i've learned and grown from my mistakes on this channel um i do feel the pressure like not just from like this channel but i just feel the pressure from myself i'm the sort of person that puts pressure on myself to succeed and that's just not going to go away overnight that's just who i am so i am nervous i am very very nervous actually i'm trying to do everything i can to take my mind off it but i thought i would just do a little intro to this video anyway so i get my results week beginning 11th of july for prelims when they did a week beginning it was two o'clock on the monday so i'm assuming i'll probably get them tomorrow because it has been a, a hot minute since our exams so i don't really know what they've been doing um but i am actually traveling i'm flying to ireland tomorrow um so i will be on a plane at 11 o'clock and i need to be at the airport from nine anyway i'm off to watch love island now and to go and sleep and just try and relax but anyway the next clip you see will be me finding out how it's gone so yes <laughs> so i'm on the phone to my mom in the next clip and like my accent is so brummy because whenever i'm have a heightened emotion like stress or i'm upset and whenever i'm on the like talking to my family or on the phone to my family it makes my accent stronger so i think a combination of acute stress and being on the phone to my mom just made the the inner brummy like truly come out so please feel free to laugh at my expense <laughs> hello oh my god my heart is like beating out my chest got the email Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna open it now. Oh god, I'm literally shaking. I just sat by myself in the airport. Um, okay. Okay. Mm. Hold on, I've just gotta get the text through. Hold on. Oh no, I don't wanna do it. Oh mum, I actually can't press the button. Okay, I pressed it, I pressed it, I pressed it. Please, please, please. Oh god, mum. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hello everyone so it has been a hot minute since i filmed the last clip it's been about two weeks i think two weeks tomorrow the reason i have not done the sort of rest of the clip and uploaded the video is because i was in ireland with my boyfriend and his family and i didn't really want to film this at their house because as you probably saw in the last clip i was at the airport flying to Belfast when I got my results through so I didn't really have a chance to kind of do this debrief afterwards. I'm going to run through my results in terms of marks and then obviously I am like absolutely over the moon with my results genuinely have still not even processed it properly like I am just chuffed a bit and I'll talk a bit more about like all of that but I also kind of do want to go through the papers and like the ones that surprised me on like how well I performed and ones that perhaps 
I thought would have gone better but just didn't for me on the day. So basically that's this part of the video. If that's not your thing, which I completely respect and understand, then feel free to click off. But if that is your thing, which it kind of is mine, I love like seeing what everybody got in like individual papers and stuff, even though I don't study them myself then stay tuned. <laughs> so I did nine papers overall and I also had two oral exams. The oral exams didn't count towards my final mark, they usually do but because of Covid they didn't. So they were either a pass fail or a distinction and somehow I managed to get a distinction in both of mine which is crazy because I thought my Spanish one went quite well. I really thought my German one just didn't go as well as I'd hoped at all. The question I had was really, really difficult and I kept pausing and stumbling over myself and I just wasn't happy with it at all. So I am genuinely so chuffed that I managed to get a distinction in that and I'm really looking forward to just keeping my languages up and I'm really proud of the progress that I've made because that was definitely my weaker aspect going into my final year was my speaking. So all thumbs up with that. Going on to each of the languages in turn, I will start with Spanish because my average for Spanish was lower. I believe for, for prelims, my first year exams, it was a higher, my average in Spanish was higher. But anyway, I'm gonna go through each paper individually. So paper one, which is a translation into Spanish and an essay in Spanish, I got a 67. Paper two, which is two translations into English, so the other way around, I got a 67. Paper seven, which was golden age, so mid 15th, no, mid 16th to late 17th century was a 75. And then for paper 11, which was two modern authors, I did Mario Vargas Llosa and I did Ramon del Valle and Clan, I got a 72. My average overall for Spanish was 70.25, I believe. I calculated this like two weeks ago, so I don't know if that's right, but yeah, so 70.25. For context, a first at Oxford is a 68.5, it's like a default first. I think a 67.5 can also be a first, but you have to meet certain conditions. I think maybe over half your papers have to be over 70. I can't remember exactly what it is, but baseline first is a 68.5. So I was very, very happy with my Spanish result overall. So for German, paper one, which is translation into German and an essay in German, I got 75. Paper two, which was two translations into English, I got a 75. Paper four, which was historical linguistics from 1170 to the present, got a 75. And then for my medieval paper, which was paper six, that's like medieval literature, I got a 70. So, and then I did my coursework for German as well, which was a 68. I did that in literature in the GDR, so in East Germany. Um, and yeah, so my average for German was 72.6, which I believe means that my overall average is 71.6, but I'm gonna check that now to make sure I've got that right. I cannot put into words how happy I am with that result because it is a solid first. Obviously, if we're comparing with my prelims, which I did in my first year, my average, I believe, was like a 74 or something stupid like that. Obviously, each university is different and obviously each subject is different. So, you know, sciences and math subjects, the sort of general threshold of marks is different. So in my first year, when I got my results back, my tutors told me that my average, which was like 74, I think, like a 74, 75 average, whatever it was, is kind of like pretty unprecedented and I did come top of the year in both of my two languages in my prelims so for context not that 75 is the highest you can go because you can get marks over 75 obviously I know that every university does it differently and I know that some unis like mark more into like the high 70s 80s like a bit more Oxford doesn't really tend to do that at least not for our degree a 71.5 average, I am just absolutely chuffed to bits with. Like a 71.5 is an absolutely solid first. It is bang in the middle of the baseline for first, which is 68.5 and the average that I got in my first year. So I have achieved my mission and I am happy. The reason I'm saying that I've achieved my mission is because when I look back at my prelims results, they were probably like the best I've ever done in exams ever but I just really don't feel proud of them at all because it came from such a horrible place. I was in such a low place. I was overworking myself. I wasn't looking after myself. I was like severing friendships. I was just in a really, really bad position mentally, physically, just everything. So although my results were really good, that came from like a really horrible place of like just depression, despair, and just really, like, I was the worst version of myself that I've ever been. As this year, I really wanted to prove to myself that you can still do well, but also look after yourself and still live a well-rounded life. Obviously, when it got near exam season, 
I did make some sacrifices. I stopped going to the gym for a while. Um, and you know, obviously I wasn't going out with friends as much, but at the same time, I was having evenings off. I was having days off. I had like so many days off in my Easter holidays, which I just never would have done before. Literally A-level GCSE, Easter holidays came. It was like, bam, I'm working flat out. Whereas I literally went on holiday. I went to visit my boyfriend. I saw friends and that carried on right up until exams. And I really did just try to obviously work hard and I obviously worked really, really hard, but try not to let it consume my life completely and to remember that there are other things that are equally as important. When I finished my prelims, it took me months to recover from that, like mentally and just emotionally and physically. Like I was an absolute mess when I finished my prelims. I really, really struggled that whole summer and basically just getting those results had completely sapped any degree of life out of me. Whereas when I finished my finals, I honestly just felt a bit tired, obviously, but I bounced back pretty much straight away and I felt well rested and well nourished and I hadn't sort of like shunned my friends or anything like that. So for me to come out with a first and a solid first at that and to have come out feeling the best version of myself that I ever have been, knowing that I put the work in but I didn't make it my one single purpose in life and I didn't base my entire worth on what I was gonna get is the reason why this set of results is like the proudest I have ever been of myself, ever. You don't see it in the clip, but I did literally just burst into tears after I got my results back out of pure happiness. And I'm just really chuffed with myself. And I know that that probably sounds a bit up myself or whatever, but any of you that's been watching me since GCSE will know I've been on such a journey, like not just academically, but just in life. And I've changed so much as a person and I used to just work myself to the absolute bone and just overwork like way more than was really necessary to get the grades that I needed to go places and I used to place my worth so much on what those letters or you know numbers on a piece of paper and obviously I still wanted a first and obviously I still wanted to do the best that I could physically do but I'm just so so happy from the place that these results came from and as you can tell by the fact that I literally can't stop smiling like I just feel like it's a really fitting culmination of seven years of like academia is it seven years yeah like seven years of doing this i just i'm so happy that this is the way that it's ended yeah, i don't know it's just been really nice having you guys come along with me and for those of you that have literally been watching for the last year thank you for watching for those of you who've been watching since i was 14 i hope you have enjoyed this journey as much as i have all the highs the lows and everything like that and i just hope you can see that it is possible to work your socks off but equally have a life and make time for all the things that are so much more important in life like friends and food and sleep and exercise and all of that sort of stuff so yeah like i this probably is like the most cheesy rant ever and i imagine most people have probably clicked off by now but i am just absolutely buzzing with my results and i'm graduating on friday I'm not gonna cry, but like, I just know that the last four years at Oxford have been like the most difficult of my life, but also the best. And like, it's really cool that I've got it all documented and I'm just really grateful that so many people have watched. And yeah, I just, I'm really happy with myself and my results. Um, so yeah. Now I've said all that, it just feels a bit stupid going through all the papers individually, but I know that some of you will want to know kind of the papers that I was surprised by both positively and negatively. Obviously, what mattered overall was the average, and my average was beyond what I could have expected and hoped for, and I am just, as I said, genuinely so, 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 so chuffed. That being said, there were definitely some surprises when I opened it of like, oh, okay. So my Spanish paper one and paper two, which I got 67s in, I won't lie, like initially when I opened it and those were the first two that I saw, I was a little bit like, oh my God. Not because the exams did not go well on the day. They were incredibly hard papers. I found them really challenging and they were my first two exams. And I think the pressure just got to me a little bit and I kept overcorrecting things and just making silly mistakes that I would never normally make. I think what bugs me a little bit is that out of all of the papers, my Spanish paper one and two, well, without a doubt the two that I put the most work into over the last year I really really wanted to get my Spanish 
up to the level of my German and towards the end of like classes I was getting 72, 73s consistently in all of my paper ones and paper twos so it didn't go my way on the day and that is gutting but I know myself the progress that I made and like a 67 is still a class mark so it's okay it's just definitely was not what I was expecting my lowest mark to be at all um but you know sometimes it just doesn't go your way on the day and and that's what happens the one that did upset me a little bit was my coursework i picked the wrong option for my coursework as interesting as it was i had no background in that and i didn't choose something that had a bit of overlap with other stuff that i was studying so we only had a term to really do it in and i felt like i was really thrown at the deep end that being said i put so much work into my coursework and i really 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 tried and the reason why I'm a little bit annoyed is because my tutor that was was sort of like consulting on it, she said, there's nothing more I can say to you. Like, this is a great piece of work. Well done. Like, basically said, like, I've got no more advice, to, feedback to give you. And I said, oh, I was like, is there anything I can do to kind of like make sure like I can try and get it over the boundary to a first? And she was like, no, I think it's great. Like, and then obviously I ended up getting a 68. It's not the fact that I got a 68 per se. The amount of time I put into my coursework was a bit obscene because um, I don't like coursework, I much prefer exams. And it must have just been not my day and the person that marked it just must not have, have liked my approach as much as the tutor that was giving me the feedback in the first place. But yeah, those three were the ones that definitely, like I wasn't expecting to be the lower ones on the end of the spectrum, if that makes sense. I want to reiterate that a 67 and a 68 are still absolutely amazing marks. It's not that. It's more that I'm surprised which paper's got the higher marks and which one's got the lower marks comparatively in my set of results, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? In terms of positive surprises, my paper one and two for German, I'm just absolutely like, yes. I could not be happier that I got 75s in my paper one and two for German. German has always been my stronger language. I honestly really enjoy it. I felt like the exams went well on the day. Not to sound like a swap, but I genuinely did enjoy sitting those exams and I found them really like fun to do. And I'm just really glad that all my years of staring at German adjective tables and trying to get to grips with German grammar have paid off. Um, so I'm really, really happy with those. In terms of surprises, the biggest surprise was 100% my linguistics paper, which was 75. I was not expecting that at all. If anything, I was expecting that to be the mark that was my lowest mark, 100%, because I found it so difficult, because you had to do like medieval German linguistics. You had to do a commentary on a passage of medieval German. I didn't study the actual German language in medieval form. So a lot of people who just do German and don't do another language, they study Middle High German, which is like the medieval German form as part of their degree they have a whole paper based on translating it whereas I had never done it before and I remember just feeling so lost in all the classes but I really did put the work in for that one especially in my second year when I was doing the the tutorials and that's really really paid off so I am apps like that was genuinely the biggest surprise my jaw literally dropped when I saw that I was like what yeah so that was definitely an unexpected win to offset perhaps me not being as happy with the other two papers that I mentioned. And the one I'm definitely just the absolute happiest about has to be Golden Age. That was my favourite paper the whole way through. It was so challenging and the Sp I just think the Spanish department are just... <laughs> if there's one thing I will say, if any of you are applying to do languages, the Spanish department are so much tougher than the German department have ever been. Not just in terms of like their teaching, but like just in terms of like the difficulty of like the specifications of the exams and like what they expect from you. I feel like honestly the papers for Spanish were just like that much more difficult and they expected that much more from you that I really wasn't sure how it was gonna go on the day. And I worked so hard for my golden age paper. I really did because I enjoyed it and I would just put hours into it because I loved doing it and i really on the day felt the pressure because i was like oh my gosh like i feel like i just want to get this right and thankfully it went really really right so out of all of them that one i think is the one where i'm like yes i worked so hard for that i'm so proud of that grade and it's just a real reflection of like four years of just really really enjoying and loving golden age literature and if i was going to do a master's which i'm not going to do but if I were to have done a master's at Oxford, I would have done it in Golden Age Literature 100%. So, yeah. Okay, this has literally been the longest debrief ever. As I said, I really want to make it clear, like, me saying that I'm not happy with a certain grade or that I'm really, really happy with one, the actual numbers themselves, like, 
a kind of immaterial it was more just my performance personally based on how much effort I'd put in for each paper if that makes sense like the the, the effort to mark ratio um so please don't think that I'm out here saying oh my god a 67 awful no fantastic mark I just wasn't expecting the papers that were my lower marks to be the papers that were my lower marks basically and mainly i'm just so glad that i've got to share this all with you obviously this will probably be my last ever results video which is crazy because i feel like i've done so many of them now so if you've watched them all then wow like thank you for sticking around and i hope you've enjoyed them and just thank you for all of you all of your kind comments all of your love over the years i'm obviously not leaving youtube like so please don't think that this is me saying goodbye it's just like it's the last video like this and yeah, I'm going to do a graduation vlog next week, so we've got one more Oxfordy themed video to go before we say goodbye for real. But yeah, that's basically my thoughts. I am so, so, so happy and yeah, I just big smiles, big love and I'll see you very soon. Bye guys. Mwah.